Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to just a little quick, um, I don't know, I guess I could call it a public service announcement. Not really. It's, it's more of a science exploration of what's inside a credit card. Now, this, what you see here, is what's actually inside of a uh, standard uh, tap-to-pay credit card. Um, now, in order to get to this, you take a credit card and you throw it into acetone, and you get something that looks like this mess, um, which is just the acetone has dissolved the plastic of the credit card, and you dig around in that soup and you can find this, um, this little bit of electronics here. Now, there are two parts to your standard credit card. Everybody knows this little thing. Um, this is the smart chip that everybody is used to sticking into the, the chip readers. Um, and that is actually uh, a lot more space than you actually need for the information that's used by the card. So if we flip this over and look at the bottom here, I'm gonna grab my soldering iron to use as a pointer. Um, you'll notice uh, we've got some pads here. I'll explain those in a little bit. Uh, and then we've got some more contacts here, which are just uh, these contacts on the front being brought to the back. Uh, we've got some little tiny wires, which I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick them up or not. Um, and then we've got this little uh, square here. Now that's the brains of the whole operation here. That's all of the information uh, that your card needs to process payments through either the chip or the NFC. Um, now a lot of people have... Uh, spread a lot of articles regarding, oh, people can steal your NFC data and buy these fancy wallets. I mean, I've even got one of those fancy wallets, but I didn't buy it for that purpose. I bought it because I like the uh, popping the cards function there. Um, and while it is, yes, true that people can possibly steal uh, your credit card information using an NFC reader of some sort, there are a number of problems, or a, a number of things that make that actually a lot harder than these news, art, news articles would lead you to believe. The first is range. Uh, Near Field Communication, NFC, has an extremely, extremely small effective range for transmission. Um, we're talking about maybe a quarter to a half an inch. And so anybody wanting to steal your data would basically have to rub up against you, and it's very likely that the thickness of your wallet and your pants and anything else that is between the reader and your cards will prevent uh, transmission. Uh, additionally, if you have more than one NFC card in your wallet, if somebody attempts to steal the NFC data, they're going to get a jumbled mess of several cards uh, trying to send data all at once. So that's another prevention, uh, another hurdle that somebody would have to uh, figure out in order to steal your data. Um, I've read some news articles where people are like, oh yeah, they can make these super high power transmitters that'll steal your data from across the room. That is physically and electronically impossible to do. The reason being is that yes, you can create a transmitter that would activate this circuitry from across the room. That's all well and good. This circuitry would not be able to send a response across the room. It is simply not powerful enough. And the reason why is because there is no battery in this. There's no power source. There's no, uh, no means of power. The way it powers up is with this coil of wire right here. This, uh, serves both as an antenna and a power harvesting device. Now, these wires go around, um, I'm just gonna grab my Costco card here. These wires go around the outside perimeter of your card. Now, these aren't uh, laying quite as nice as I'm sure they did in the card, but they go around the outside perimeter of the card. Um, now, you'll also see uh, these little zigzaggy bits with pads on them, they align on the inside of the card with the pads on the outside of that chip. That's why I said I'd address those later. 
So what happens when you take your tap card and you bring it into distance near the, um, the tap to pay thing, that tap to pay thing has a small modulated electromagnetic field, uh, radio frequency field being generated by it. As, and we've discussed this briefly before, when you take copper and you pass it through a magnetic field, it induces a current. Now that current activates the chip, at which point um, the chip begins to exchange data with the chip reader, or the tap to pay thing, um, by modulating the RF field, which then the chip reader can detect, and they start exchanging data. Now, the first bit of data is just a handshake. The reader is sitting there with its electromagnetic field, and the card comes into distance, it activates, it says, hey, I'm an NFC card, would you like some data? And then the, chip, the card reader is going to say, yeah, sure, um, you're a Visa, so here's this hour's Visa decryption key. And then the card says, okay, that uh, properly decrypts my data, so here's the payment information. Now, that all happens in a couple of microseconds, a very, very fast exchange of data, uh, because it's actually very short strings of characters. Um, now, people have also said, yeah, they can get your credit card number by just, you know, tapping it on their phone. That is also impossible. Uh, you can't get any sort of salient data off of these without the decryption keys. And all of the major credit card manufacturers use a rolling encryption key so even if you manage to steal one of the keys, it's only going to be good for about an hour. Um, the other thing is, even if you did manage to get a decryption key, the data that is sent by this card to the chip reader has absolutely nothing to do with the numbers on the front of the card. So unless they know how to interface the encrypted data that's stored on this chip uh, with a different payment system, they wouldn't be able to actually use the NFC data off of your off of your card. Nowadays, uh, back when tap to pay cards were were in their infancy, yes, you could get an entire credit card number off of the tap. But now they've got two layers of encryption on it, and it has nothing to do with the numbers that has uh, that are on the front of the card. And even if they were able to get the numbers on the front of the card, they wouldn't be able to get the CVV2 number that you need off of the back of the card for any online transactions. So these things are actually a lot more secure than uh, the mainstream media and uh, other people would have you believe. Now, I do understand where people would be uncomfortable having a tapped pay card. So all you need to do, if you want to disable that feature on your card, is uh, on the side where the chip isn't, and I'm not going to show one of my actual credit cards because they have the numbers on the front, and I don't want to display that to the internet. So pick the side, let's say that the chip would be on this side of the card. Just uh, take your credit card and clip about a quarter inch off of one corner. Um, the reason why you want to do that is it's going to nip that antenna off. Now, once you've cut that antenna, the antenna no longer functions and will not be able to activate the NFC function of your credit card. So if you're still concerned about people stealing your tap to pay cards, uh, just clip off the corner of your card and you'll be perfectly safe. No need to spend uh, money on those completely scammy and generally ineffective uh, NFC prevention sleeves or wallets or anything like that. Um, just clip off the corner of your card and you're perfectly safe. You're safe anyway, but if you destroy the antenna, then you're really, really safe. So anyway, just a little bit of uh, information on how NFC cards work there, and we'll see you in the next video. I'll put a link to subscribe here, a video you find uh, that YouTube picks for you there, and I'll throw a random playlist over there. Have a great day.